Today we are going to reveal the game changer component for Grasshopper that is called Multipipe and it comes with Rhino 7.2 or newer version. I will walk you through each input and show you how we can use in different scenarios. Let's get started. If you are interested in a structured step-by-step -step learning approach with personal 1-1 support 24-7 and homework exercises, feel free to send application for our Rhino for Architects online course and schedule your call with us where you will get more information about that. All details are in the first link in the description. The course covers various topics like parametric modeling with Grasshopper, fluid form modeling with SubD, architectural visualization, animation, presentation techniques, and way more things. Hi guys, Lazar here. Before we start, if this is your first time here and you want to learn how to use Rhino and Grasshopper, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell button so you don't miss anything as we upload new tutorials each week about Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use them specifically for architecture. Alright guys, multi-pipe component is placed in the surface tab, sub D panel. You should find it here. If you don't have it here, probably you will need to update your Rhino version. It has to be 7.2 or newer. In the first example, I'm going to show you how we can create sub D object using multi-pipe and how we can change the radius. So let's start uh, from the point. I'm going to create a sphere. Here we set the radius and I'm going to populate uh, this sphere with random points. Okay, and now I'm going to connect uh, initial point with the points uh, we have on the sphere. And that's how we can create uh, several lines. Once we have 17 lines, uh, we can convert them into single sub D object using multipipe. So these lines I'm going to place in the curves input and in the node size, we can set the radius of the pipes. So let's see. All right. And if I change this slider, we can see how the radius of these pipes is modified. And if I place a panel in the output, you can see we have a single sub D with 159 faces. This component is great because all of these connections in between these pipes are really smooth. That would be a basic example. And in the next one, I'm going to show you what other inputs are represent here. So first I'm going to start again with the point. And then I'm going to create the decahedron using the lunchbox component. Once we have these lines, I'm going to uh, deconstruct the B-Wrap and extract only uh, these edges. And let's see what happens if I connect all these um, lines into multipipe. Uh, for now, I'm going to unplug all of this and let's keep just uh, the radius or the node size. I'm going to turn on this one and this is the output. Let's see what this end offset means. By default, it's set to one. But if I change this slider, we can see how these lines in moving in this or in this direction. So we can basically divide this geometry into this uh, node segment and this uh, strut segment or strut size. So that would be uh, this node part. So this is one part and another part is this, this one. So let's call it uh, middle segment of the edge or strut size. And here with the, with the offset, we can define this length. If I change this here, you can see how, how this distance is modified. And with the strut size, uh, this is by default one. If I turn down this slider, you can see how the radius of this uh, middle part uh, is uh, modified. And that's how we can create this organic shape. So if you need to create this organic shape, you can use this strut size in combination with the end offset. And if you want to modify even more, we can uh, change the segments of this middle part. By default, we have just one segment. And but if I connect this slider in the segment, you will see how we'll get these divisions in between. Uh, by default, it's zero. But if I set a 0 
will get these divisions in between. So if I bump this slider up, we'll get less divisions. If I turn it down, we'll get more divisions. We can also use sub D control polygon. So that's basically low poly version of the sub D. And let's see what we get here. This is probably more visible in this low poly uh, version. So if I change the strut size, we get something like this. If I set back to one by default, we get this smooth transition. And if I change the slider end of set, you can clearly see how this uh, middle part is modified. Or if I want to add more segments, we can see it here. All right, that would be the explanation for uh, these three inputs. Now I'm going to show you what this king angle means. So let's start with a single curve. We don't have a line anymore, we have uh, this curve. And I'm going to convert this curve into a multipipe. And let's turn this on. I'm going to unplug this one. By default, right now it's set to 0.6. And let's turn on the edges of the sub D. Okay. So instead of having uh, this value by default 0.6, I'm going to place the slider. So basically, this slider define how precise the sub D object will be or the multipipe. If we want to have like super precise uh, object based on the curve, we'll uh, set this slider to really a low value. So if I set to let's say 0.02, on this high curvature segments, we'll have more divisions. And if I bump this up to one, uh, the precision will change the number of the kings on the curve or on the sub D. So basically, if I bump this up, you can see uh, how the segment of this sub D is changing. But if I turn it down, we'll have more kings or more division and the sub D will be uh, more precise based on the initial curve. And the next input that we'll talk about is called uh, cube fit and uh, it's used you know, when you have these cubical forms. If you want to have corners as sharp as possible, you're going to use cube fit. So you will not keep it as default, which is zero. So you will probably want to uh, uh, increase this value. So how it works? We have uh, these lines placed in the 90 degrees angles, and you want to create multi-pipe from it. And this is a uh, initial result. Let me turn on this one. Okay, so if you want, let's say, to use this cube form and you want to have uh, basically more sharp corners than this one, I'm going to place value one into cubit fit. All right, uh, if you want to get different result, we can play it with other input. Instead of having a uh, value one in the end offset, I'm going to set zero. And we can get this kind of result. For me personally, the best way to use this cube fit in combination with end offset is in this low poly version. So let me show you. So basically we can create uh, rectangular pipes from the single lines in combination with the multi-pipe and cube fit input. So by default, you get something like this. So if you don't use other inputs, this would be the result. If you place zero in any input, but if you want to have rectangular faces with 90 degrees angles, we are going to use cube fit input. And that would be uh, our result. Of course, I use sub D control polygon with the combination with unwell mesh in order to have this kind of result. And of course, you can change uh, the radius. And if you want to play with this, 
you can change the slider you can add the strut size and so on and so forth the last two examples are related to size point input using this input we can use different radius of the pipes how it works first we need to have node size and size points inputs and the number of the inputs should be the same so if we have three inputs for the node size or three different radiuses we'll need uh, three different values for the size points how it works i'm going to turn off the final result and let's say we start from here and instead of placing a single input in the node size or in the radius i will set three different values and i will place it here so it means we'll need three different values for the size points so i'm going to use bounding box and then i'm going to evaluate this box in order to have three points what does it mean all lines that are closer to uh, this guy will have the radius 1.3 all lines that are closer to this guy here will have the radius 3.8 and the same logic for the third point to to this one okay i'm going to turn off this one and we have these three points and these three points i'm going to place in the size points and here we set the radius if i turn this on you can see how we have different radius based on the position of these points and these uh, numbers if i set 0.3 0.3 is related to uh, this point here and if i let's say change the position of this one uh, the whole shape is modified in the uh, last example which is related to uh, the size points i will explain what will happen if we have multiple points as an input let's turn on final result we have a set of 363 lines we have uh, 120 points here on the end of these branches and as a start point we'll use this button one all right so all these lines will be placed in the curves at the node size or the radius of uh, these pipes will be set here by using uh, these components okay we have as we said 120 lines and that's why i'm going to uh, use repeat data so 120 uh, times we are going to repeat these values and we have 120 times 0.33 so this is the value for all these points on the branches then we are going to set the size of this point on the bottom which will be let's say 4.63 and here we have 121 value for the radiuses or for the node size and the point as we have 121 point if you remember we should have the same number of values in both of these sliders so i'm going to place all these points in the size points and once i turn this on we get this result basically the radius or the node size that are closer to these points will be 0.33 and we can change this slider and see how the shape is modified and the pipe that are based on this point on the bottom or we can simply call it the trunk size we can change it here For all of you who would like to go a step further, I created an extended tutorial in which you will learn how to convert every surface by single click into a weave pattern in combination with multi-pipe. You will be able to change density, thickness of the pipes and offset factor. This you can watch on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all our extended tutorials and project files.
Before I wrap this video up, I would like to thank all our Patreon supporters. With your help, we can create high quality tutorials for architects all around the world. If you like what we do, please consider becoming a patron yourself. Take care.